Good day. I'm Tom Raines, pastor of First Southern Baptist Church here in Quincy, Illinois. And it is my privilege and joy to welcome you to this special program on the National Day of Prayer, where in our city we are observing the 69th annual National Day of Prayer. You may be wondering, what is the National Day of Prayer? It is a day set aside every year for our nation to come together and to pray for God to bless us and to show us what we need to do. The National Day of Prayer has been in existence, as I've said, for 69 years. But we've had prayer much longer than that in our nation. Our presidents, all the way from George Washington to Abraham Lincoln to Franklin Delano Roosevelt and to our president today, has called our nation to prayer. When George Washington was president of the United States, one of the first acts he did was declare a National Day of Prayer. Abraham Lincoln, when he served as president, declared a National Day of Prayer. And President Franklin Roosevelt led the nation in prayer as we launched the D-Day invasion on June 4th, or pardon me, June 6th, 1944. The National Day of Prayer was done by an act of Congress during the presidency of Harry Truman. It was Ronald Reagan who declared the first Thursday in May as the National Day of Prayer during his presidency. And that's why today we gather together. You may know that today in Washington, the president has held a presidential prayer breakfast. About 15 years ago, our city began to do a mayor's prayer breakfast on the National Day of Prayer. On that day, the mayor invites governmental leaders, he invites educational leaders, civic leaders, and the media to join him in a time with the local ministers in our area to meet together and to pray. We've had a number of folks speak at that National Day of Prayer, Mayor's Prayer Breakfast. They have ranged from governmental leaders to educational leaders to political leaders as well as our pastors. Because of the coronavirus this year, we are not able to hold that meeting, nor the noonday prayer meeting that we hold for the general public. But today, we want you to take part in the National Day of Prayer. We want you to join with us as we pray together as a people for our nation, for our state, and for our local government and the area that we live in. You are going to hear in the next few minutes our mayor as he reads the mayor's proclamation declaring today the National Day of Prayer in the city of Quincy. Following our mayor, you're going to hear seven ministers in our area as they pray for seven specific areas. Now, prayer is something that you need to participate in. As these ministers lead us in prayer, we want to invite you to join with them in praying. Today is the National Day of Prayer. It is the day where we pray for God to bless our nation. The theme for this 69th annual National Day of Prayer is pray God's glory across the earth. In Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 14, God's word says, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters that cover the sea. Today, that's our desire. Today, we invite you to join with us and pray. You listen now and watch as our mayor reads the proclamation declaring today the National Day of Prayer and join with our ministers in praying. God's blessing to each and every one of you. I want to read a passage from 2 Chronicles 7:14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. It is my honor as mayor of the city of Quincy to commemorate the National Day of Prayer, whereas the 69th annual National Day of Prayer is being honored in cities across the United States of America today. And whereas the first Thursday in May of each year is the National Day of Prayer as authorized by Congress and as proclaimed by the President. And whereas the National Day of Prayer is celebrated by Americans of many religions, including Christians of many denominations, including Protestants and Catholics, as well as Jews, Sikhs, 
Muslims and Hindus, reflecting the demographics of these United States. And whereas the theme of 2020 is pray for God's glory across the earth, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the earth. Habakkuk 2, 14. And whereas it is fitting for Quincy, Illinois, a city of many faiths, to observe this national day of prayer, now therefore I, Mayor Kyle A. Moore, do hereby proclaim Thursday, May the 7th, 2020, as national day of prayer in the city of Quincy, and I encourage all of our citizens to participate in daily individual prayer and provide support for government and business leaders that they may provide wise, courageous, and ethical leadership under God at every level. May God bless you and your family. On this National Day of Prayer 2020, I've been asked to pray for the church. Before I do, I want to read to us 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 10 and 11. When the priests came out of the holy place, a thick cloud filled the temple of the Lord. The priests could not continue their service because of the cloud, for the glorious presence of the Lord filled the temple. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that your presence fills your church today. We are your temple. You have built this temple one person at a time, one place at a time, one nation and family at a time throughout history and around the world. And you have called your church, your temple. You've called us your living temple. And we do ask, Father, that you would fill us the way you filled that physical temple in the Old Testament. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill the church around the world and equip us. Make us so filled with the Spirit, not that we can't be in your presence, Father, as they couldn't be in your presence on that day, but so that sin cannot be in our presence, so that Satan cannot be in our presence. Fill us so filled with you around the world as one body, one church, that all that is dishonoring and displeasing to you may be removed from us, that we may be glorifying and pleasing to you. We ask these things for your glory's sake, for your glory's name, Jesus. You have paid the price for our sins and you purchased us with your blood. And so we are precious to you. You have loved us and we want to live to your glory. We want to be a testimony, standing strong, a temple, a place where those who do not know you can come a church where people who are inquiring about how to know the Lord and how to live in a manner pleasing to you may come and meet with you because you dwell among us. We pray that you would purify us, cleanse us, and equip us, that you would strengthen and encourage us, that you would lift us up into your, uh, into your holy presence, that you would uh, give us the confidence to go out into the world and take your presence with us to uh, make disciples of all the nations, to bring people into the church, into worship, and into relationship with you. We pray that you would equip us for that, that you would fill us with your spirit and empower us, that you would give us the courage and the boldness that we need. We pray that you would make this temple a light, a light for the nations, that many would see that there is a God and that he is among his people and that there is hope, there is life, and there is peace available because of what you did, Jesus. And we ask that you would do all these things, not for our glory, not for our name or for our sake, but for your sake, Jesus, for the glory of God, for the glory of Jesus Christ. And we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 102, verse 15. This is the word of God. It says this, The nations will fear the name of the Lord. All the kings of the earth will revere your glory. That fear of the Lord is not one like, oh, you're going to hurt me. But more it's to have awe and reverence for the Lord. And all the kings and all the governments of the earth will reveal your glory, revere your glory. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I, we come to you today on behalf of our government. We pray for our president that you will remind him each day that all good gifts come from you. This blessed country is because of your providence and your leading. Let President Trump know of your presence and all that is happening around our country today. We pray for Vice President Pence that you will give him the right answers as the leader of the response to this COVID-19 pandemic. Help him as he has shown publicly you are the ultimate ruler and to keep relying on you. We pray for our Senate and the Majority Leader, Senator McConnell. 
Help him as he officially leads the Senate in the decisions that will be affecting the entire country. Bless our Illinois senators also, Senators Durbin and Duckworth, and let them go to you for the right answers for each vote. We pray for our House of Representatives in this country and the Speaker of the House, Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi. May you also guide her thoughts and remind her you allowed her to be there. We pray for the congressman from our area, Congressman Darren LaHood. Help him to stay in your will, Lord, and to go to you for the advice every day he needs for the decisions that need to be enacted upon. We pray for our governor, J.B. Pritzker. Help him to know each moment is yours, and he represents not only the people of Illinois, but also to act on your behalf for the betterment of your people. We pray for our Illinois area officials, we pray for Jill Tracy and Randy Freeze that again, you will be in their minds and hearts as they represent us. We pray for our mayor, Kyle Moore, that during these uncertain times, you will be the center of his thinking and actions. Do that also for each of our city's aldermen and women. We pray this, reminded of the end of Psalms 102, 15, that all the kings of the earth and presidents right down to our older people will revere your glory, God. We ask it in and through your name. Amen. God, bless America, bless Illinois, bless Quincy, and bless us all. God bless you. Hello. As we celebrate the National Day of Prayer, today I want to pray over the families of our city. I'll be reading to you from the book of Ephesians chapter 3, beginning at verse 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye be rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, length, depth, and height." And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Paul, writing to the church of Ephesus, began to express his desire for them to both know and recognize the blessing that they had been given by the infilling of the Spirit of the living God. This same God, he would then go on to declare, was the Father from whom all family love would emanate. Much like the dying veteran of Napoleon's army once said, dig a little deeper and you might find my emperor. Much like him, I would like to suggest that we would dig a little bit deeper in this time of pandemic. And it is my sincere prayer that we would find Christ to still be the center of our families. So with this in mind, I would offer a prayer of blessing and favor over each and every family of our city, along with a prayer of love and power of God that would be emanating from every home and every heart. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we are fully aware that it is You that we live and have our being. It is from You that all blessings flow. You are our Creator, our Savior, and You are our pattern. You gave to us an example of love so unconditional that we know without you being our guide and our strength, we would surely fail. But through you, we know that all things are possible. It's during this time of uncertainty that I pray that your love and strength would become more present in each family and in each home. And in the face of great adversity, we would be reminded today that you are our ally and you are great and that it is you that is going to bring about your glory through everything. I pray over every home. I pray you would fill them with love, laughter, and learning, as well as full of peace, power, and prayer. We pray your blessings and favor would rest upon each and every family of our fair city. And it's in the most precious and powerful name of Jesus that we ask these things. Amen. As we pray for our nation on this National Day of Prayer 2020, I've been asked to pray for education. Before reading a passage of scripture, I want to say thank you to our educators and administrators. These last two months have been difficult on all of us, but our teachers and administrators in this area have done an amazing job uh, creating an entire new curriculum for our students, and we thank you for your efforts. 
This verse from Ephesians chapter 1 reminds us the source of true wisdom and understanding. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Join me in prayer. God of all wisdom and understanding, we give you thanks for the institutions of learning that seek to convey wisdom and instruct many in the knowledge and understanding of the things of this world. Pour your blessing upon the education system of our nation, especially in this time of pandemic. Grant wisdom to administrators as they seek to educate our children while at the same time protecting them and their families and keeping all safe from harm. We are grateful that you have given us the understanding to create technology that can be used for learning. And we pray that you would bless our teachers and educators as they revamp and teach in new ways to educate students. We pray that you would give hope, the hope that comes to us in Jesus Christ. Grant that to teachers to calm the hearts of those who are troubled because they cannot end the school year with their children and because they are frustrated by the learning that is now taking place. Grant a greater level of understanding to all students. Help them to be diligent in their studies. Help them to have wisdom in their learning. We pray especially for those seniors those graduating students who are transitioning to a new way of life, guide them in their next steps, open the doors of opportunity, and may their learning prepare them for the great adventure that awaits. Receive our thanks for the Quincy Public Schools, the parochial and faith-based schools of our community, John Wood Community College and Quincy University. Father, be present with each of these institutions and the entire education system of our nation that they may be filled with wisdom from above. In your precious name, amen. Well, it is my privilege to pray for the businesses of Quincy and the surrounding areas and everything that you have done and those business owners that have kept open during this time or have been able to keep open during this time and the social distancing. It's been very difficult. But I believe God has given us the strength to be very uh, strong during this time. And uh, Quincy is better off for it. I would like to read a passage of Scripture that will give you a little bit of strength during this time and help you to pray for the businesses. It's in Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. It says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will and in the wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you might... Walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to His glorious power. Let us pray with one another for the businesses of Quincy and Adams County. Heavenly Father God, we thank You that we have been strong and diligent to be able to stay open in many ways during this time. And Father, uh, many places have had to shut down. They have been hurt by this crisis. But Quincy remains strong. And Lord, we thank you for that. And all glory and honor goes directly to you. But Lord, also, we would like to pray for those businesses. And the Lord, for the small businesses that are struggling right now to keep their doors open. May they be given the aid to be able to open up once again. And when they do, may they be able to hold on to the regulations that are needed in order for businesses to move forward. Father, give many of these businesses, even the large ones, the strength to move on. That Quincy thrives on small business, thrives within this place on businesses. And with them, many of them shutting, shutting down, it's been difficult. But Lord, we know that where we are weak, you are strong. And Father God, we pray right now that in our weakness, 
as a city in the struggles that we are going through, that you will remain strong and that these small businesses themselves can also open back up and be strong as well. Father God, thank you so much. And thank you for keeping us safe within this place. Lord, to all honor and glory be given to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Tim Red. I'm so privileged and honored to be here today, right here at WTJR, uh, taking part of this National Day of Prayer. And my assignment today is to be praying for the military. And uh, with this prayer, we're going to come out of the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, uh, starting at verse 10. The Bible says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you might be able to withstand in the evil day. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you and give you glory, Lord Father, for those men and women, Lord God, that have accepted the assignment to be in the military, Lord Father, uh, to, to operate, to protect this land, Lord Father, and our freedom. And God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will keep them whole, that you will keep them in their right mind, God. No matter what they see, no matter what they go through, Lord Father, that they have the whole armor of God, knowing that this is spiritual wickedness, Lord Father. We pray in the name of of Jesus, Lord God, that you will protect their lives, Lord God. Lord God, we pray that you will protect their family, God, that you will that you will uh, help their children, Lord Father, and help their wives and, and, and their husbands, God, help uh, uh, their, their fathers and mothers and siblings, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that whatever they go through, it will cause them to see you in a greater light, Lord Father, that they will have a greater revelation of you, Lord God, knowing that it's not just the guns, Lord Father, that it's not just the bombs, but but, but it is your Holy Spirit that is protecting them, God. I pray in the name of Jesus that whatever they're going through, Lord Father, that you will cause them to become victorious, Lord Father. We pray in the name of Jesus that while they are out there on the battlefield, Lord God, that they will begin to preach and teach, hallelujah, God, the gospel of Jesus Christ to those that do not know you. Glory be to God. Knowing that they're what, what they're fighting, Lord Father, as far as the physical sense, Lord God, is not the only fight that there is, God, but that there is a spiritual battle. Glory be to God. And in the name of Jesus, that you will cause the Holy Ghost to come upon them, that they may be pre able to preach the gospel and win souls, that those that are lost will be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, that they may be able to fight this spiritual war themselves, God. We lift them up, Lord Father, and we know that you have a plan for them, and we thank you, Lord God, that whatever that you have set for them to do, it shall be done, God. We thank you for their strength and their courage. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hi, and on this National Day of Prayer in 2020, I have been asked to pray about media. And the scripture that I will be sharing is from John chapter 7, verse 18. I'll be reading from the New International Version. Whoever speaks on their own does so to gain personal glory. But he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is a man of truth. There is nothing false about him. Amen. Would you join me in prayer? Today, God, we pray for our media entities. We pray for the decision makers within the media to realize their efforts of producing family-friendly projects will gain so much more for our nation. We pray for Christians in media that they would find favor and be filled with creative ideas that bring kingdom principles and life-giving messages to the public. We pray for celebrities to be provided with repeated opportunities to hear and to receive and to share salvation. May you be at work, God, in the places of social media. 
Let our lives reflect that you abide in our hearts. Encourage us to ask the questions about what and how we share stories with the people around us. May our media always respect you, O Lord. We pray this in honor of this National Day of Prayer. Help us to be near one another in our hearts, even though we are separated now in body. We offer this and all prayers in your holy name. Amen. Let me welcome you back at the conclusion of our National Day of Prayer program and thank you for participating with us. We're so thankful that you have chosen to join us and to pray with us. The Bible says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. We know that if our nation is going to be blessed, if our state and our local area is going to be blessed, it's because God will do it. And He loves to hear the prayers of His people. So not only on this National Day of Prayer do we encourage you to pray, but we encourage you to pray every day. Pray for those who are in leadership over us. During this coronavirus, we would much encourage you to pray for our first responders, for our medical personnel. We would encourage you to pray for our educators and our business leaders. We would encourage you to pray for perhaps a group of folks that you haven't thought much about, but you heard one on our broadcast today. We would encourage you to pray for our chaplains, men and women who are on the front lines being the hands and the feet of Jesus in our hospitals, in our nursing homes, in our military, and even in prisons. These men and women are sharing the hope of Jesus. So as you pray on this National Day of Prayer, remember them. Let me close us this morning by praying the prayer that has been given for the National Day of Prayer. You pray with me. Lord, we exist to give glory to you. We exist because of your glory and in your glory. As our creator and redeemer and sustainer, we give you thanks and praise for every breath and moment you have given to us. We repent of our sins for the shameful things that we have done against you and our silence when we needed to speak up and proclaim your name, profess your name, or protect and practice your will. We ask for your forgiveness. We pray that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will spread across our nation and the entire world as we seek your kingdom and righteousness, as we walk in obedience to you and in humble unity. Help us to love one another. Jesus, the Bible says that you are the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, and you have taught us to pray, and you've commanded us to love and commissioned us to share your gospel of grace. Your glory fills our hearts and our families. It overflows into our neighborhoods, workplaces, campuses, churches, our entertainment, and the media. We give thanks to you for our military and ask that your glory would spread to and through them as they preserve freedom around the world. We pray for our government, that all that our leaders and laws would do would fulfill your glory, that they would magnify your holy word and honor your will and ways. We pray that your glory and grace would spread and to bring hope to the hopelessness that we experience and love where there is hate and hurt. God, use us as we pray your promise that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters that cover the seas. Amen.